Hey everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to do a quick and basic but important problem in physics, and that is how to find somebody's velocity after a brief period of acceleration. Here is our classic physics question. And as I read it through, I'm going to make sure that I keep an eye out for every single number that they give us. So, Sue rides her bike at an initial velocity of 3 meters per second. That's a number, so I'm going to underline it just so I remember. Next sentence. Suddenly, she starts to accelerate at 3 meters per second squared. Interesting number. Definitely going to underline that. Now's the question, what is Sue's velocity after she accelerates for three seconds? So I will underline that final number as well. So every single time I'm doing a physics problem, or at least every single time that I do a physics problem right, I write out every single number I found. So initial velocity of three meters per second, initial velocity, so I'm going to write that, just, I'm going to give it a variable right now. So velocity, I always write those with a V and initial, I'll do VI. So V velocity initial, and that's equal to the number we found, three meters per second. Okay, next number, acceleration of three meters per second squared. So acceleration, I always like to write it as an A whenever I can, because acceleration starts with an A. A at acceleration equals the number three meters per second squared. Okay, last number, three seconds. And that's, what is that number, three seconds? That's the, uh, ex she accelerates for three seconds. So that's gonna be, I'll call it the time she accelerates. So time starts with a T, I'm not gonna be too creative here. So I'll write it as T for time equals three seconds. Every single problem in physics, I like to think of it as a story. And to tell this story, it's about someone riding her bike. So I'm gonna draw it out. So I'm gonna do the first part of the story on the left side. I'm gonna do the last part on the, on the right side and I'll do the in-between stuff, the part where she's accelerating in between. So the story starts with Sue riding her bike with an initial velocity of three meters per second. So I'm going to draw a bike with Sue on it. Okay, so here's Sue and she's moving at a velocity of vi equals three meters per second. I don't feel like writing out the number right now, so I'm just going to write a little arrow represents her velocity. This velocity is speed and a direction. Say so the positive direction is to the right. And I'm gonna label her velocity, V, I. Okay, next, she suddenly starts to accelerate at three meters per second squared. Now I'll draw Sue on her bike as she accelerates. Okay, so here's the middle part of the problem. Or actually, so here's the middle part of the story. Sue is now accelerating at three meters per second squared, our acceleration. Uh, and that's going to be adding on a speed to her initial velocity. So I wrote these two, I drew these two arrows right next to each other so we can visualize them being added together. And at the end of the story, we're going to combine the VI plus the acceleration times her time into one final velocity, which we don't know it yet, but they ask us for it. And this is her velocity at the very end of the story. So I'm gonna call this VF for final velocity. And we don't know this yet, but we know enough now to figure out what it is. So, let's figure out, let's try to write an equation that combines all of these quantities. And I'm going to start with what we actually want to find out, which is Vf 
And now we can try to figure out what VF is from all its ingredients. So the ingredient we start with, I like to write that first, and that's gonna be the initial velocity. So that's almost certainly gonna be in VF, because that's our starting point. So the final velocity is gonna be the initial velocity plus some change in velocity. And if you feel comfortable with this stuff, you might recognize or you might predict that that change in velocity, I'm gonna write this off to the side, that this change in velocity is gonna come from the acceleration, A, and the time over which he accelerated. So why does this make sense? So one way that I like to justify this idea to myself, the acceleration times the time as a velocity, actually writing the whole thing out. So I'm gonna rewrite A as the number they gave us, but I'm gonna rewrite these units. So rather than three meters per second squared, which is a little bit abstract, I'm gonna write three meters per second, this looks a little like a velocity, right? Over seconds. And then we multiply it by time. But if you notice, you might notice this. Seconds down here in the bottom of the acceleration will probably cancel with the seconds in our time. So let's write this out to completion. Oh, and let me remember the delta V here. So delta V, now we have now we have actual numbers for this. The change in velocity is gonna be our acceleration, three meters per second per second, times the time, which is three seconds, times three seconds. So, do you notice this? The seconds can totally cancel. That's what I'm gonna do right now. And then we can combine these numbers, we're multiplying them. So, delta V is three times nine, I'm sorry, three times three, delta V is three times three, nine meters per second. All the units that are left over stay behind. So now we do have a number for everything but our unknown. We have VI, that's three. So we're just gonna rewrite it with the actual numbers now. So VF equals three meters per second. Sorry, I messed that up a little bit. Plus, nine meters per second, our change in velocity. And let's bring the VF, since that's what we're looking for. So we can now combine these two velocities, add them together, and you get 12 meters per second. VF equals 12 meters per second. So that is Sue's velocity after she accelerates our final velocity at the end of the story. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped you and good luck with your homework.